Since the early days of amateur radio, crystals have been the primary method of obtaining oscillator frequency control. Manufactured in various types and case styles, they were the go-to method until the advent of variable frequency oscillators. In the world of today's operation on the amateur bands, most AM QSOs take place on a very few frequencies on the lower bands, making a VFO not really necessary. The availability of specific AM frequency crystals today is somewhat limited and often expensive. Other than grinding your own, we can seek a perhaps more modern alternative. In the January 2018 issue of Electric Radio, Bob Nichols, W9RAN, published an article titled Quartz Crystal Replacement Alternative. Bob related his work with a programmable oscillator chip manufactured by Epson and available from DigiKey Electronics. The chip is sold programmed with a buyer-specified frequency. Bob circuit, containing up to four selectable oscillator chips, is available as a kit from Hayseed Hamfest. The oscillator chips are not included. I bought a kit and ordered four oscillator chips from DigiKey, each programmed for a popular 75 meter AM frequency. Assembly was simple, and I hooked it up to a DC power supply, 8 to 16 volts. It fired right up. The frequency analyzer and scope patterns look good, delivering about 6 volts RMS. Thus, the Robert A. Nichols R RAN digital exciter was born. I developed a block diagram for a medium power AM rig using Bob circuit and the Hayseed board to drive a simple exciter using either an 807 or 1625 tube coupled to a speech amp modulator driving a single 813 power amplifier. Back in the early 1960s, my great uncle built a novice transmitter from the 1961 ARRL handbook. I still have it and the power supply in my collection. The little rig looks like it was factory built. Unc could take an old TV set, strip it down, and build several projects from the parts. He was meticulous in his work, a trait I have tried to follow. I didn't want to tear the little rig up. Instead, I came up with a schematic using the handbook article. It would need a buffer amplifier, so my design team came up with a plan to use a 6AG7. At this point, I want to make it clear that I am a builder, not a circuit designer. My very dear friends are electronic experts. They show me the way, and I simply build it. Without their help, I would be an appliance operator. The rig was designed to only operate on 75 meters, and I used four oscillator chips on the hayseed board. Construction was simple, and I think it turned out about as well as the one Unc built in 1962. I'm using the exciter power supply he built as well. Output was between 10 and 14 watts. I'm a great fan of the 813 tube, so another article in the same 1961 handbook was a starting point for the power amplifier, and I had all the components in hand. My construction method is to lay out the chassis and panels full size in Adobe Illustrator. This allows me to easily arrange the components and locate all mounting holes. When I'm satisfied, I print the files using my large format printer. The aluminum chassis and panels are cut to size and the prints are mounted on the aluminum with spray adhesive. This makes cutting, punching, and drilling simple and far more accurate than trying to lay it out in the conventional manner. Afterward, the paper is peeled off and the excess adhesive is easily removed with mineral spirits. Here's a view from the back to the front of the inside of the PA. Hardware is all stainless steel and note the liberal use of half-inch aluminum angle stock. And here is the chassis bottom. Note the isolated input section in the lower left-hand corner. The modulated 813 screen voltage comes from the modulator. Front panels were wrinkle painted and oversprayed. 
Lettering was done with a rotary engraving machine on plastic tags. The 813 looked so cool with its filament glowing behind the Lexan window. Enclosed with perforated aluminum, the back of the rig is shown with all connections in place and labeled. The speech amplifier modulator was adapted from an article in the 12th edition of the Radio Handbook, sometimes called the California Handbook. The circuit uses a pair of 811As, another of my favorite tubes. The driver and modulation transformers for the speech amp were liberated from a parts ART-13. The ART-13 is a 100 watt transmitter built to military specifications. While 100 watts was the nameplate power, the modulation transformer will handle 200 watts with reasonable care. I followed the same construction procedure for the modulator as I did with the PA. To power this puppy, I designed, yes, all by myself, a simple 2 kilovolt power supply using a plate transformer gifted to me by John Milner, K4VZS. The rectifiers are 3B28s. The 240 volt primary of the plate transformer is wired through a variac to vary the plate voltage output. I had the blue enclosure in inventory and named it the Blue Piglet. Old pal Butch Charteau, K0BS, once built a 5 kilovolt version he named the Blue Pig. Butch uses it for his QRP work. In order to turn everything on with one switch, and key the oscillator and antenna relay, I came up with a simple control box. It uses solid state relays for the 24 volt control circuits. An open frame 120 volt AC relay triggers the outboard Dow key antenna relay. The station setup looks like this. I'm using a Hammerland HQ110 receiver from my early days in ham radio. It works extremely well. The BC348 is, at present, only eye candy. A Heathkit HO10 monitor scope and a bird watt meter are located in a spare S-line cabinet. The microphone is an Electrovoice Mercury. At Guy's Weekend back in 2020, the design team was here, and we fired it up. By golly, it worked. Hey, Scotty, thanks very much. Boy, it's been a long time since I've talked to you. No, I don't usually get on AM at night. I'm on 3885 uh, with a bunch of guys in the East Coast every morning. I haven't heard anybody on 3890 in ages. With minimal uh, drama and time. tweaking, we met the test specs as follows. On 3885, the exciter puts out 10 to 14 watts. Fed with an unmodulated carrier, the PA delivered 200 watts using 1800 volts on the plate at 200 milliamps. The screen voltage was 400 volts. Modulator idle current was 70 milliamps. Speaking into the mic, we set the gain until the meter peaked between 100 and 150 milliamps. Our best guess on the modulator scope was 95% modulation. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe and leave a comment.